Hi, everyone. We're going to work on another block out of row 11 today. It is row block 11i. And let me spotlight this and I'll show you what we're going to do. There we go. All right, this is block 11i. This piece of fabric you see here, these little cat's eye pieces, that is your background piece of fabric. It's a plain piece that you put down first. This cog looking piece here is an applique over the top. These pieces here are appliques over the top. So it goes together a little differently. What we're gonna do is kind of do it as we go along because there's no way to do this one in pieces. We're going to, just going to do it. We may pause the recording and then come back when it when we got that part of it finished. So there may be some jerks in this, but please excuse that. And um, but we're going to start with mom showing you how she's going to work on this piece. Mom, okay. To start with, I took my solid piece of fabric and I glued it to the foundation, and that's what we have. The next thing to do is stitch on the red lines. So I'm going to do that right quick. And this is where you would turn your, yeah, you keep it stitch slowly. As you turn things, you're going to lower the foot, lower the needle, stitch until the, you run out of straight line and you need to move the fabric and you're just gonna keep doing this until you get to a corner and you're gonna sink the needle and pivot and then just keep going around on the red line. You wanna make sure that you don't try to turn this and keep sewing because there's nothing holding this piece of white fabric in place at the moment. Your stitching is what's going to hold it down. Granted, you've got some glue on it, but in if you, this area, in the very center area, um, but you don't have anything else holding it down. So if you try to turn it under your machine foot and the feed dogs have got a good hold on that fabric, it could twist it and put puckers in it and wrinkles in it. When you turn it over, you're just not gonna like what it looks like. Kind of like trying to fold a fitted sheet. <laughs> yeah. And it just it's like, okay, we kind of wad it up eventually and here's what we go. Well, this one, we can't do that. We've got to keep moving things so that everything lays flat. So as mom goes around this, where she's using her hand wheel on this thing quite a bit. And this um, one does not bust with a needle down position. I have to, I'm the needle downer. Yeah. And when you get close to a point, you want to make sure that you get to the point. And if your needle is up, then you need to put it down so that you can pivot and not lose your spot. She's doing pretty good. She's halfway around it already. But anyway, when she put the glue on that foundation, she put it in the middle of the piece here. Yeah, she put it in the middle. I'm going to move away from her while she finishes that. She put the glue on the foundation in this spot right in here. Now there's fabric that goes out to here, but we just put glue in here. That's all you need. You're you're kind of moving around here so we only needed glue in the middle it takes a little bit i mean not just one little swipe you kind of i would go around this just a little bit not massive amount but enough to hold it in place i think she's down to two more and two more little scallops here two more little scallops in the cog this one is kind of an interesting one um but we're going to kind of give you some pointers on making sure that these little points in the cog end up right where they need to be here and here you can see they meet right on um and these are four different pieces and we're going to show you how to put them together it makes a collar so you think of a collar going around something or a scarf you've got a scarf that you're putting around something and how or you want it or a fence however you want to think about it but it's something that goes around there's nothing in the middle of this piece is here and there's nothing outside of it so this is kind of a different one. She got all done with it. I talked you through it. And I threw my scissors on the floor. And I gotta go find them. Okay. 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 Now that's all sewn. The red line has been sewn on. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is. 
come back here and it's trim time. Now, wait a minute. Do you want? Oh, it is you, a you trim don't want, time. You don't want to trim because you need to not have. Yet. You got to have all of this out here. Thank you for stopping me. Okay. So in all this right. case, you're not going to trim because this is this piece of fabric is what's under here. Yeah. And it's what's under it's here. What's under here? Because right. you're, if you trim anything, you want to trim what's in the middle. Yeah. Now then, this is that's the side that the. Um, it has the writing upside right so you can read it. And this one here, the writing is so that you can read it. This point is going to go here. So let's turn this over. Actually, it's an easier. Okay. And I'm going to. Okay, that's the top. Okay. Now, on this piece, I glued the applique pattern to the fabric and I took this pen and I eyeballed it and made a mark around here and I've already cut that part out. So this let is me... your quarter inch seam allowance. Yeah, basically it, that's a turn under. I, it's probably more than a quarter, a little less than a quarter. Doesn't really matter. Okay. You got to have enough to turn under. Okay. Okay. Then I trimmed that away. Now the last thing to do is to, on here I've already made a cut to the point on each one of the on each one of the points point there's each a point there's a cut and i have already before i came on camera i already fray checked at the tip of each one of these little things so there's fray check in the fabric now this one has been cut i can hold on to it this one has been cut to that point okay now i'm going to trim to this point and to this one. Those are the last two that are left. Now then, clip, clip, and I'm clipping fairly close. It's less than a quarter of an inch, not to the foundation, but just a little ways away from it. And take your time because you don't want to clip too close. Okay, that one's all been clipped. Now, Go to the old ceramic tile, and I'm going to do section by section. Each little, each little have each little dip in here is going to have its own. Do each one by itself. Yeah, do each one by itself, and you don't have to go any farther than that. And concave curves are easier to turn than convex ones. In other words, the innies are easier to turn than the outies. They practically turn themselves. And that one's pressed down. Now, I have this little point here. And I don't want that left there. It's bulk. I want to get rid of it. So I take my scissor, and I'll loosen that a little bit. And I'm going to start at that point right there, as far as my scissor, and just cut down. Okay. There. And there. Now I'm going to dampen the next one. I'll work around this way. And as usual, I kind of pinch it to get the crease started. And that one's down. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to keep on moving around and trim this one back. But eventually you'll come back and trim. I'll come those. back and trim those little guys that are sticking out later on. And you could trim those as you go if you want to. Yeah, up to you. I just prefer to do it after all. Okay, said and if done. you're going to trim it as you go, what, how far, what you're your... going to trim it? I turned over the right side up and I slipped my scissors in underneath there and aim them toward the point, whatever's left gets cut off. Okay, now let's turn it over and see what, okay. And that's what it looks so like. you've got just a little bit of an angle on that. Then. Yeah, okay. and I've got a little tiny thread hanging on here. It's been fray checked, don't worry about it. We'll fix it later if we need to. 
So each of those points have been fray checked. Yes. And I did that before we started. Actually, I did that before we stopped for lunch. Okay. Okay. So you're going to keep doing this and going all the way around mm -hmm. until you get them all, all done and all the pieces trimmed and your corners trimmed the way you want it. And if you want to go to, to go away and we'll come back when we get it all ready to go down, that way you don't have to watch the boring parts over and over and over again. Okay. Well, the paint will dry faster. Yeah. Tell you what, I think we're going to go ahead and pause the recording for right now, and we'll be back when she gets it all done and all the way around and show you what the result is. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, we're back now. I've got all of those edges turned under and pressed and trimmed up so that there's nothing sticking out beyond these little points. Now for the... Before we go farther, I want to make one observation we okay. talked about this while we were off camera here because i was asking some questions this piece which is what you're doing here this one has to fit inside this collar so these points can only go so far okay would it be a good idea for somebody to take their piece of the pattern piece that they've got before they've got any fabric on it. Before you got any fabric on it and lay it down here or and lay it on this side mm -hmm. and see if it's going to stay within those confines or if it's going to be too big. If the pattern piece does not allow for turn of cloth over the edge at these points, then when you put cloth on it, you're going to be encroaching and you may cut your points off. I would think put the pattern piece down on this to see if mm -hmm. it's too too big if it is too big go back and trim it just a flicker and make it a little smaller until it is the size you want allowing for turn of cloth then add this to it and i did trim away all the red lines from this piece so i was pretty assured it was going to fit okay well after you've done it three or four times you kind of know you kind of know that but for anybody who's not done it before, that's a good way to audition it to make sure that it's going to work right. Okay, so the next thing I do, a lights, please. Oh, <laughs> she's my my lights person. Oop, wrong yeah. way. Okay. Now, if you look through here, this is the point where a point should be. Okay. Here is where another point should be. Here is where another point should be. You can see through there that that black line shining through. And another point. And another one. Sometimes I think there's 15 points around this curve. Okay, then that's where an edge should be. This is the edge of the scoop. And it's easier to do it this way. Used to be I would lay the applique on top and then turn it over on the light thing and then try to move it so it's lined up perfect this just makes it so easy now then this is okay there we've got our writing the right way up this is top this is top okay let me let me put that together a different way hang on a minute okay all right Th this is just another way to do it one b is here one one b is here these are the same the same orientation take this Put it on top and now flip it. Mm -hmm. You now have your piece pretty well exactly lined up the same way it should be. Mm -hmm. You've it it's sometimes it's a mind thing. Right. Whether your mind works that way or not. Either way just, works. Either way works. It's just an alternative. Okay, now then the next thing I'm going to do is line up as closely as possible as I can these little red dots. And they're all lining up. I'm pretty good. I can see them myself, but I do not see them coming through on the camera. So you'll have to trust that they are. There they are. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. And a pin or two. Let's see here. Or three. Or three. However many you feel. I like these because they're fine pointed. Now it's time to applique, and this is the next step. Let me get myself my um. You're gonna do it by hand. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to start by hand. Okay. And then I'll finish by hand. And then we'll go away and let you... We'll finish and we'll come back. Did you lose your needle? I lost your thimble. Lost your thimble? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's uh, not... Probably underneath something that I'm not looking under or behind. I'm sure it probably is. We've done something with it. Okay. I can manage without a thimble for we'll a We'll have bit. to find it. Okay. Now, you try to get a thread that's as close a match as you can to your focus fabric. And this is a pretty close match. Darker, a little darker in shade is always better because it blends in better. Now, not the end. And it doesn't matter where I start. Would you use your ham and pin it in there? Or is this... I will eventually. Okay. I'm going I'm to start this because I can roll this around in my hand and, and it'll be all right. So okay. I'm going to run my needle be between, behind the white or the background. And I'm not going to start at a point. I'm going to start somewhere else. Okay. Somewhere before or after a point. And then the next thing is a little, your, your needle parallel almost with your background fabric. Slip through under your background fabric and come up right at the edge of your applique. Pull that through. Now I'm close to a point, so we'll get into the panel how we handle these little sharp points right away okay and while you're getting to the point and i'm i'm there i'm almost to the point okay. which is fine now the reason that you come up underneath for your first thing is the fact that you're burying your knot right i'll hide it you hide your knot so you don't have to worry about that it's the only reason for coming up underneath now i'm at this point and you can see where my thread's coming from i'm gonna go let's get hammy over here Porky or whatever you want to call him. And I'm putting this pin through fabric and the foundation. Okay. Now that I got something to pull against. Your needle is going to go down right beside the, the, found, the applique. And it's going to come out on this side. Under the point. Under the point. Not through it, but under it. And pull that down. Now, go back the same place. Under. You're not going through the point. Hold this thread down here so it can't go up on you or get out of the way. And you just anchored that point. Okay. Hold it back. still. Let me see if I can get down really close. I don't know if it'll be clear. There's a little thread right there. I don't know if it'll get clear enough for me to. Right. The thread is right there. Now I'm going to go back again to this side. Doesn't want to get clear. And enough. under. Are we clearer now? Yeah. Okay. I'm going back a little ways from where I was. So you're going to make a little bigger bite I'm going make across. A little bigger bite going across. And I still want this thread. In fact, I'm going to put it behind my needle. So when you came out on this side here, was it pretty much in the same spot you did before? Pretty much. Or were you down I'm, a little I'm bit? Da I, maybe a thread or two down is about all. Okay. Sometimes pins are a blessing. Sometimes they're a curse. Okay. That's that has tacked that point down. It's there. Okay. Now then. Now I'm going to go down here, pick this up, just through the back of the, through the found, through the fabric, and I'm putting my, and if I think I've picked up any, I'm, I'm wiggling this, and you can tell, mm -hmm. you can tell by sound, and you can tell by feel. When you're doing it yourself. Yes. Now I want something. I want something to pull against me here, which is why I moved that pin. Okay. 
And when I put my needle back into the to the backing, I want to be on the right side, the right hand side of the thread where it came out of the applique. So it's almost like a miniature part of a back stitch. Yeah, very small. Very small, but you but don't want to leave your, it keeps you from having that slanted thread showing on the front side. That that takes care of that right there. Okay. Almost a thread of my needle. Okay, now then another little stitch. I'll get to the corner and we'll do that that tack down one more time and then we'll go off camera and finish this because to get this right you have to finish one before you can do another this one doesn't lend this... itself well to, to piecing it and stopping and then the middle of the stream and then go back and try to pick it up again this this block doesn't do that very well almost made it to the corner there's the corner, and I still have a little bit of room right there. Okay. A little bite of fabric in the background underneath and on top and coming out underneath on this side. That tacks that down. Now then for the tack down, just make another stitch just, just to make, make another sure. stitch in the background only. And this is one way to get this tacked down. There are probably many other different ways, and it's just one way. It's one way that I found worked for me. Now, whether it works well for somebody else, that's debatable. Now we go down this side. Go down this side, and I'm going down right about where I came up. We're going to go down this side, and you see I almost, I could pull the backing, which I released. Okay. Okay, we're going to pause, and I'll finish the applique, and then we'll come back when that's done, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Well, we're back again. Mom's got almost all the way around this thing and I'll let her take over showing where she's at. This is where I started. This is where I am. So I'll finish up this little bit, this tiny little bit here. And I'm playing thread chicken too, in case anybody noticed. Okay. That was where I started. Now I'm going to take a tiny little stitch in the background and come through to the front. I'm going to take the thread that's coming from the applique and wrap it twice around the needle. Pull it through and just tie a knot. Now I'm going to take that needle to the back side and there it is. Okay. So that is applique. Okay. And it's really flat. It's not been pulled. Part of it's because you're putting it against that ham and you're pulling against it. Mm -hmm. and you're not wadding it up. I'm not wadding it. Now I'm going to press this. And I've gotten rid of all of the little red marks that I made around there. Now, the next thing to do is we have the green lines. So I'm going to stitch those. Okay, before we do that, mm -hmm. on the front side, let's compare this to the block here. Now we've got the center. Now these little pieces here are still part of the background. These are the ones that are in this, in these little mm -hmm. cutout pieces, these little dips. The next piece we've got to put on is this one, which is the collar. And these are also an applique, and that's the green line applique that she's talking about. So we went straight from a red line applique here to a green line applique that's going to fit around here. And this is green line, and this is also a green line. Okay, so we've got I, a green line on mm -hmm. the inside and on the outside. Mm -hmm. You're not dealing with a different piece of fabric, so it didn't switch color. 
you're right. dealing with the same piece of fabric. It just has two edges that have to be applique down. Now then, that said, because that I way. took, this is pattern 4B, this is 5B, and this and this lines up. They have the same number there? They have the same number. We've got fours and fours. Okay. So you've got really short seams right now. We're not used to these little bitty short seams. And we have twos, and we have ones, and we have threes. Okay, now this is kind of beginning to look like this, mm -hmm. just the tad. Now, I've already trimmed here. You've got to remember that this right here and this line right here is going to be right here. Two of them. It takes two of them to go from one here and one here. Right. And one's together, so this whole seam is this. Okay, so we don't need to worry about trimming out here because it's going to be yeah. trimmed. I don't trim when that we, when we do this. So the outsides this of these here, you don't trim because they're going to be trimmed off when you when you get ready to put these pieces mm -hmm. on out here. Okay. Now I glued these pieces. I cut these out and I cut away as much of the green line as I could. I here and there I left a little bit just to make sure I was on the right track. You will trim out only this and only this, and then clip into the curve. Only trim on the colored line. Do not trim where there's the black line. And these right. are black lines here. This is the only green lines is on these two spots. And you only trim out on the curved lines, not the straight ones. You curve line. So I'm going to trim this one out because I didn't do it earlier. And I'm eyeballing it. Well, sort of. I already marked it so I wouldn't get lost. And that's probably not big enough to do a whole lot with. And then this one here. Okay. And now we go back to clipping again. We go to clip and clip this close because this has got to turn a pretty sharp concave curve. It's what makes the little round in the it's in the corner. That little one makes this curve right here in mm -hmm. the corner. The other part makes this big curve right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you have to do that on all of them or is mm -hmm. that the last They're one? On, this is the last one. I did it oh. on the other three ahead of time. So we were a little mm -hmm. ahead of ourselves. Okay. So right now we just need to wait for that one and then I won't assume what you have to do next. <laughs> this thing goes together different than you ever thought it would. Okay, now I've got them all clipped. All right. The next thing is cut away the extra right here on the numbered places, the numbered edges only, and it's not very long. Trim that one. I'm cleanup crew today. You're cleanup crew today. We'll let you be cleanup crew. You come to my house anytime you want to and do that. No, I have enough trouble at my own. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, I could try. <laughs> I know it's a good try. The maid doesn't come to work anymore, so I don't know. It gets pretty pretty deep at my house. Yeah, I don't remember the maid. <laughs> <laughs> my kids left home, so I don't really worry about it anymore. <laughs> right. Okay, now, next thing. Okay. We want to find one and one. There's one. And there's one. And we're going to sew them together. That little bitty short that seam. That little bitty short seam. And I want to be just... I'm just barely off okay. the foundation. Bring, bring it under here so we can sign it safe. I'm going to stick my pin through here. At the end of the printed line. At the line. end of the printed line, and it should match there. And it does. We're so you're shape. not on the foundation. You are right, right off, off of, of it. it. Okay. Now then, I'm going to pin this together out here so it doesn't shift because it's short. Okay. I'm going to set my needle right at the end 
where the line starts. Of the line. Yeah, where the line starts, and I'm going to sew forward a couple stitches, then I'm going to sew backward a couple stitches, and then I'm going to go to the other side. So you're sewing only on the foundation, mm -hmm. not on any of the fabric by itself. And at the end of the foundation, I backstitch. Okay. All right. That one's together. And that's what we have. Okay. Now, we're going to match two and two. And that's these two. Do the same thing. Do the same thing. Okay, and when you hold it like this, what you're looking at is the foundation on this side and mm -hmm. the foundation on this side to try to kind of line them up before you stick the pin through it. You can see it. Mm -hmm. May not be quite lined up, but it gets close. Well, if I stick my pin through here at the end of the line there, uh -huh. and it comes out at the end of the line there, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. So I know it's probably gonna probably going to be just right on this end. It's so short. Yes. It's kind of hard to be wrong. Can happen. And I'm setting my needle down right at the edge of the foundation. You set your needle in the fabric before fabric. you put the presser foot down. Yes. Backstitch a little at the beginning. Go to the end. Backstitch there, but stay on the stay foundation. On the foundation. Okay, that seems so. All right, now we're ready for three and four. And if things work out just right, that's where we are. Okay, there's three to three. And the same thing again, you match up the foundation, stick a pin through. Well, I was a little off, move it over. Now we're good. Going to start a little bit in back stitch. And the only thing left is seam number four, basically the same thing. And then you're joining your circle. Yep, I've made my collar. And the last one. Start where the foundation starts, backstitch a little, go to where the foundation ends and backstitch there. So seam that's probably about half an inch long, maybe. Yeah, maybe a half inch long. Okay, we got the seam sewn. Now, that little bitty flap sticking out there got to go away. The foundation in the seam allowance. The foundation in the seam allowance has got to go. Okay. There's no option. It's got to go. Got to go. Now we'll see how this works here. Okay, so you're open press it, you're gonna press the seam open? I'm gonna press the seam open, but what I didn't do and I should have, I should have sold through at the end. On the inside. Mm -hmm, on the inside. And I didn't do that. So that means I've got to go back and correct that. Okay, so on the inside of that seam. You can backstitch where the backstitching at the end of the foundation was the right. Yeah, but I should but have sewn. But you should have sewn clear through, the, clear through the seam allowance. And you don't have to backstitch there. You are right. so long. Okay, so we have to correct a little bit. We have to fix our mistake. Well, it was, it was not a mistake. It was an omission. There you go. That's what I'm going to tell whatever, you. Anyway. Whatever you want to call it, we go back and fix it, which is an easy one to do. 
Okay. So it's one of those, don't do as I do, do as I say, you should stitch through the inner side of the circle thing. That's probably in the directions too. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't remember. It's been a while since we did. We had one earlier um, where we sewed through the stimulus. Now, okay, we got that sewn through. The next thing to do is, and this is really a picky part, You've got a seam right here, and you're going to have to turn that. That seam is the one that you just sewed so, through. So I'm going really close. I'm not cutting the stitches, but I'm cutting the fabric. You're like three stitches away from that seam allowance. I'm less than three stitches. I'm about a stitch away from the seam. Okay. And then I'm going to clip this in straight. And I cut out that little square shape. Okay. And I'm going to do that on all of them. So you're just like a thread or two away. A thread or two away. Now, there's nothing you can notice. This is on the bias, so you don't want to pull on this too much. But you do want to, this cut is made straight into that, in line with that. Um, with the foundation. The foundation edge right there. So you're better off going in and kind of making an angle cut rather than cutting too far. Yeah. Oh, I got that one just about right. That one just, yeah. All right. That okay. takes care of those. Now then, we're going to go press these seams open. Okay. So those four little bitty short seams are going to get pressed open. takes longer than you think. Yeah, by the time you get the little fellas pressed, pushed open. Okay, now there's our collar. Okay. But I've got to turn the inside edge. Okay. Because if we go back to our original, you can see on the original, There's a seam right there. That's the one I just sewed. That mm -hmm. little seam right there. There, there, and there. Mm -hmm. And this inside edge all the way around is turned under to applique. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go back. Now then, I'm, I have this, this um, ready to turn, and I'm not going to do that right this moment. I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to stitch on all the green lines. Okay. Um, we're going to go off camera here for just a little bit, but what a, are you going to stitch the green lines and then turn this and then we come back on camera? Or are you going to just stitch the green and just show... stitch the green line and then I'm going, we want to come back on and I want to show how I, how I handle this right here. Okay. So might as well just, we'll come back when I get the green line done because it's a tedious process. Okay. In that case, then we will be back shortly. Okay, we're back. She got the green placement line sewn on here. They're here, all the way around here. All the way around it, and then in the four corners. So if we turn it over, I don't know if you can see it very well or not. There's you the can... corner. Corner. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Corner. Corner. Okay. And, and going around there. Okay, those are the placement line for the the applique, um, the, collar. the collar that we that she just made. Okay, now the next thing to do is we've got to do some turning. And I do this in sections again. If you put if you put your wet on everything all around, it may have a tendency to dry before you get to it. Now, one other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this off at an angle. Again, just to reduce bulk, mm -hmm. right? Reducing bulk. Okay. I can see I'm going to need the vacuum cleaner when we get done with this. Yes, you are. I'm a trashy person here. 
<laughs> I hope your vacuum cleaner is ready to work. Yeah, I got a Kirby that's got probably a pretty good bag on it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start and I'm going to pinch it as we do before. And you're going to pinch the seam line as if there were no seam line there. Right. Okay, making sure that the seam allowance that's left is opened. And this seam just about turns itself. It makes it really nice. Okay, then I'm going to put moisten this and this. We go on kind of to the next seam. Mm -hmm. I'll try to go maybe just a little beyond it. That's damp enough. We don't need to try to teach it how to swim or give it a bath. And my fingers are going to be in the way, I know. You're doing pretty good. Now, when you, you can use the toe of the iron, basically it's doing what it should be doing. That toe of that iron just kind of fits that right around there. And we're to that point. Now, some more moisture. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I like these curves like this because they turn a lot easier than the outside ones, then go in the other direction. Uh-huh. Your iron is a is a help instead of a hindrance. Well, when you go the other direction, the pieces that you've clipped tend to want to overlap each other. Yeah, and they, and, get, they, and fight. they should. They fight with each other, and that's where you get into the problem with a flat side when, a cur when it should be a curve. Right, and with this one, when you open it, they each one got their own space to live. Yeah. Okay, that's done. Now then we have to take care of these. And on this one, take your moisture clear out to the edge. Okay. One thing I also learned whenever you're looking at it's kind of a funny thing, but it really wasn't at the time. I was using the fabric folding pen at a show. Well, I couldn't pick something up because my hands were dry, so I licked my finger. The one that I'd been folding everything with. <laughs> that stuff doesn't taste very good. <laughs> so if you're going to do this, keep something, either decide you're not going to lick your fingers <laughs> or realize it's going to taste bad. Or keep something handy to wash your hands so that you get rid of that starchy, whatever that is. Whatever that flavor. Flavor. And it's it, not mint, believe me. No, it does not taste good. It's like, ugh. And I couldn't even cover that up. Everybody kind of laughed at me. And I don't blame them. <laughs> so I, I learned something. It's like, don't lick your fingers after you've used this stuff. Oh, I tell you, the things we learned. And I'm not sure if this starch would be the same way, but I don't really want to find out. Well, actually, true starch is supposed to be made out of cornstarch, which doesn't taste bad. doesn't have much taste at all. Well, well I'm not sure what this stuff is. I think they put something in it to keep it from getting moldy because, you know, your homemade starch will get moldy. Yeah, they got some preservative and those things don't ever taste yeah, very good. They don't ever taste very good. Again, you look like a saw blade. <laughs> yeah, it does. You can see why this takes so much time to get it like you should. Yeah. And here again, I'm going to fold. And this is this is another one of those places you want this fold to go straight out. And we're overlapping some, which is going to happen anyway. You mean like right? We're here, overlapping here a little it's bit. Going to happen there. Yeah. Just don't be upset by it. It's going to happen. In fact, it better happen or you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay. All right. Now our saw blade looks pretty decent. Oh, now we're back to lining we're it up. We're back to lining it up. Okay. And here again, the writing is, is right side up. So this writing is right side up. And it goes like so. Okay. This seam should match up with that point. And this seam should match up with that point. Likewise, all the seams. And we're right just barely over the point, which is not a bad thing. So now let's line it up. And pin it down, because I think it's a little it's a wiggle on you. It's ornery. It's a weird shape. It doesn't have any, any. Um, I'm going to say composure. Um, and it's going to wiggle on you. Now, I cut off the points a tiny bit not enough to make a difference i don't want to stretch this collar i could but i don't want to the only option We're would better be better off with it go back and trim this a little more and quite frankly i don't think it's worth it okay it just depends on what you want but if you want to like we did before this we said to put this pattern down to see if it was going to give you enough turn of cloth you can do that with these to see if they're going to give you enough turn of cloth with the pattern pieces before you lay them down you can kind of lay them down and overlap them where the seams would sew together and see if it's going to give you enough turn of cloth and then if you don't like it then trim out a little more around the inside edge here um but there again that's entirely up to you right Okay, now the next thing is to applique around this circle and then applique around here. That's right. All four of those corners have to be applique right. also. So we're going to leave you again, and I'm going to go back to applique. I'm getting really good at this. So we'll go now, back Now, on applique. the outside here, would you go clear out or would you stop? Oh, where, I'd stop back. Where there's well, a seam line? Yeah, I the, no, because see, you're going to cut to go in here. Here's where you're you're gonna add. I would stop back about here. Okay. This is where your borders when your borders are gonna go on. This is the outside edge. So your borders about there. I'd start back about here. Okay. You wouldn't go and have what, to go all the way. And out. what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark this about. It gives me a guide to go by. And what she's marking is where these pieces yeah where these where little, these little pieces are going to meet out here right so that's what she's doing and there's and the, since this is going to go out into the seam line there's no sense in mark in in appliquing and putting it down mutt way out the seam's going to catch it on the next on the next right. round you want to be far enough that you're comfortable that you're you're not going to have wiggles or anything in this but you don't have to have it clear way out to the edge you're just going to cut it off anyway right all right so at this point i'm going to go back and applique and when we get this part done then we'll carry on and i'll show you the last things that we do with this block okay and uh We'll see you in a little bit. All right. Well, we're back. She's got the applique done around. All of this is done around here. All of these four are done here. Okay. And I'm pinned to the ham. Now, I want to tell you something else before we go any further. If you don't have ham, not everybody does, and you can, if you, if you can get far enough away from your from your work, you can put this under your machine foot, sink the needle, and it'll hold it while you applique down here. Then pick up the, the nail, move it, mm -hmm. and go someplace else. So that's how I did around here. But when I got out here, it was a little too close, so I had to be more careful, and I pinned it to the ham. So that's that was so what I had there. That's an alternative. Yeah. Something else. Okay, now what is next? The next thing is to take the pattern out of these pieces here. And it actually goes here. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes from here to here. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta. I've gotta loosen it up. Okay. And I'm sticking this. Now this little tool has a flat side and a rounded side, and it's real good. I got it from an Applequick. 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 
Okay, now that I've got that, and I'm going to put my finger down here and hold, so I tore that one in two. That's what I wanted to do. Then I reach in here, and there's the other half of it. So you're you're holding your finger down here to tear it, and then you hold your finger back out here, so you pull out the remainder of it. Right, and I'm pushing this in to go up against where I had applique to loosen the glue that held these pieces to the fabric. And that's part of the starches there, too. It's kind of glued down with that yeah. starchy stuff. Yeah. So just kind of loosen everything up. Now, I've got hold of this. Okay. I'm going to put my finger here so I don't tear stitches out and work on it and just pull it. And like, well, likewise with this one. The second half comes out a whole lot easier than the first one did. But that's just the nature of the beast. Okay, I'm loosening that. Go in from this end. Get hold of that, pull, break, get hold of this one, pull that out, one left to go. Well, I really had some glue stuck in that one. Okay, there it goes. And there's all the little giblet pieces that we had. Okay, so all the applique pattern now is out of it. So you right. don't have, you've reduced that bulk. Yeah, now then I'm going to press this so that everything's nice and flat. Okay, the next thing to do is finish the block. And finishing the block simply means adding on these four outside pieces. Yep. That's all there is left to do. So 2A, we had one. One A was here. That was all that white that was left, or the background that was left. So two is the next piece. So now you're going to use the stable piecing general directions, and you're going to follow those. Um, it's right here. Hidden. Okay. Fold it back on the line you're going to sew. Use the add a quarter ruler to give your seam allowance and then trim off the excess. Now, this is where the excess of these pieces we were talking about, where this would be coming off. You're trimming it back here. So there's no sense in trimming it ahead of time. You're going to trim it all this at one time. Mm -hmm. And we put this on here. And since it's a longer piece, it works better if you pin it out here to keep it in place. And I don't pin this end down here. I just line it up and stick it under the machine foot. Whoops, gonna follow. And I'm gonna sew backwards for a little bit. And I'm gonna sew forward. And it's really hard to get your, because of the light on the sewing machine that she has to have to see, by the way. I can't see it. So take my word that she's sewing on the line. I've had some training in photography lighting, but as you can see, I'm not we the best have yet, We have yet things to learn, but that's all right. We'll get there. If you all are patient with us and you have been wonderful so far, we'll make it. Okay. And what you need? This. Oh. So these moisture, moisture on the thing, she's using that same pen. It doesn't matter whether you're doing the applique turn, whether you're doing anything else, anything you need to turn a seam and make a crease, that starch pen, folding pen, whatever, is always going to make that job a little easier. Okay, two is on, we're gonna go for three. Okay, fold that back over, use the added quarter. Now, before you cut, these are those little pieces that we told you not to worry about last time because they were gonna come off at some point. This is when they come off. And there was our little seam. Remember we had a, the mm -hmm. folds in it? All right. Like I said, this is follows the general directions. 
starting with probably steps number I don't remember the steps, but it's one of them. Um, I don't think it's steps one and two. I think it starts a little bit farther down than that. I don't have those memorized quite yet. Well, why not? Well, I'm working on it. My memory's only so full, and I got to empty some cabinets before I put more in. <laughs> don't, don't crash the hard drive. No. Okay, so as far as the line goes, and backstitch. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you want to backstitch at the beginning and the end and don't over sew. Correct. We only want to go as far as that line goes. Back to the iron. beginning to take shape over there it's kind of coming yeah coming together it's coming together okay piece number four that's this one now i'm going to cheat i'm going to cut piece five too because I can't, because it's across the block from the other one. Right. It's not going to be crossed by any other seam line. That's one of the things that we've not explained to anybody, because normally one piece has to go down before the next one can go on. You have to do them one piece at a time. If you're doing something like this, that one piece is opposite the other, or one piece does not intersect the other in any way, you can trim both of them, lay both pieces on, pin them both down, and you can kind of chain sew up to a point. Now, while I'm here, we're going to do this. And it doesn't matter right right now which order you sew them in. So this because, is the one I'm going to sew. Right, because they're neither one going to intersect each other. Right. There is a method to it, and there is a reason for keeping things in a certain order when one seam intersects another. When they do not intersect, we just make an arbitrary decision which one needs to go down first, and but they can both go down at the same time. Now the other one. And I'm starting in from the end of the seam line a little bit and I'm backing up. It just eliminates bulk and these little blocks. <laughs> if you start at the outer edge, you move in a couple of stitches, back out a couple of stitches, and then go to the other end. You've got three lines of stitching in those two or three stitches at the beginning. If that makes a difference to you, then start in just a, just a few stitches back stitch and then go forwards you'll only have two lines of stitching over that specific area sometimes it makes a difference and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't it, doesn't. it just depends all right both of those pieces are gone now they can be starched and pressed this is when you get to the fun point because you know you're almost done and with these little bitty blocks, getting one of them done is a major accomplishment. Yeah, because for no bigger than they are, they take a lot of time to do. But then if anything's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Okay. All right. Now it's peace. The edges are not cleaned up. So I'm going to clean them up now. 
And then we'll do the final thing, which we don't all, usually clean up the outer edges is the last thing you do on a block. So, she, she wants to show you something that's going to eliminate bulk. And it's something that most people are a little scared to do. Um, and I myself would be a little, a little leery. I live more dangerously than you. Uh, you've had a few more years to live dangerously. I'll probably get there. I'm just not quite there yet. Okay. All we have to do is ask my kids. <laughs> Okay, hey, we're almost there. Okay, that's cleaned up. Now for the last thing. Remember, we've got foundation and we've got foundation pattern in the applique. We've got foundation. We got the and foundation. We got two layers of fabric. We got the fat, the the white colored fabric that's underneath of this. We got the pattern for this, and we got this piece of fabric. So there's four layers here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. You've got to leave the foundation in around here. Yes, because if you don't do that, then it's going to give you a problem when you try to put the... You need that for when you go to join it together. Now, we don't want it here. So I'm going to take a pointed little tool, and I'm going to start taking this out along the red stitched line. And remember, there's glue under this piece, so it's not going to want to come up real easily wherever you put the glue. Okay, that's out of there. Everything else is intact. That's good. There's only one layer of fabric here. There's two layers here, but I'm not going to worry about that. That's not as bad as this in here. Now then. So right here at this point, we got two layers of fabric and still one and, layer, mm -hmm. one layer of foundation. And foundation. Here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I think I am, make a little hole. Now, before you go any farther, mm -hmm. if y'all will remember, we tell you when we do appliques that you're supposed to cut away the fabric that's going to be under the applique. Okay, we did not do that in this case because it was in, it was enclosed. All we're doing now is cutting away the piece of fabric that is under the applique, but we're doing it after we've got the block pieced. That's all we're doing, just a little different order. Rather than cutting it away first, we're cutting it away afterwards. If you cut it away first, you'd have all kinds of problems getting that first applique down and to lay flat. Yeah, because you have nothing to stabilize, yeah, nothing your, to stabilize the rest it. of your block. So in this case, you want to cut this away later. Okay. Now there's our piece of applique pattern. And it shouldn't be attached to anything. There we go. And there's the applique pattern. And now you have one layer of fabric. You see my fingers through there. You have one layer of fabric here. Now, if you really want to, you could take out this, this foundation. I'm not going to do it now. I may, when I get it ready to go into a quilt, will take out this piece of foundation and get rid of split this fabric and then reach in there and pull that. No, I will take it out. You took it. all your foundation. I took it out. We're you good. Took, you We're only good. got two layers of fabric right. in that one. And there's there's nothing to take out. I mean, it's too close. Yeah. So that's that's the block. And that's the way it, it mm -hmm. is fixed, finished, mm -hmm. taking the extra fabric out. And there you go. And and it's kind of, kind of floppy here in the middle. This one that you got the picture of in the in the book didn't have it taken out because well, we just didn't want to take it out because you couldn't see then exactly what we'd done. So that's there's the difference. Mm -hmm. And it made you, yeah, this made a better picture for what you to, for yeah. you to see. But this is how you get rid of that extra fabric in there. And you haven't damaged anything and you haven't hurt anything. You you actually you've improved the block. Right. And this is in better shape. This is still stabilized. It will still join to another block easily. Mm hmm. So there we go, folks. Okay, that is block 11I, which is close to the end of that row. Later on, we'll do another one on, what's the next We've one? got another block we're going to bring in, but which we kind J. of won't tell you too much about it right now. We'll just do it as its own block, just like we've been doing with these. So if you've got any questions or anything, give us a holler. The email address is farmlandquilting at gmail.com. 
or you can put a request in through the website. Um, but yeah, get a hold of us if you need any further explanation or if something doesn't come through clearly. Anyway, thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye all.